So now that you know about selective permeability, and now that you know about osmosis, we have one last issue to tackle, and that is how do things that can't get through the membrane get across the membrane? So let's get started taking a look at that. So as I just pointed out, most of the large solutes, things like amino acids, sugars, nucleotides, fats, can't get across the membrane by diffusion, so they need help getting across, and that help comes in the form of what's called a transport protein, a protein embedded in the plasma membrane that specifically carries these substances across. If the solute is more concentrated outside the cell, then it would normally diffuse into the cell. And as a result, the protein that transport it requires no additional outside energy source. And this is called passive transport. If the solute is more concentrated inside the cell than outside, then diffusion wouldn't bring it into the cell. In fact, diffusion would carry it the other way. And so then energy will be required to transport the solute across the membrane. And that energy, of course, is in the form of ATP. And such energy requiring transport is called active transport. So the words passive and active refer to the lack of requirement of energy and the requirement of energy to get transport accomplished. When molecules are going down their concentration gradient, in other words, from high concentration outside the cell to lower concentration inside the cell, then the proteins basically are just helping diffusion. And we call this kind of transport facilitated diffusion. There are generally two types of proteins that carry out facilitated diffusion, and I'm going to show you them right now. One are called channel proteins, and these are proteins that have channels that run through them that allow certain molecules to pass and others not. And one of the most famous types of channel protein that we're going to talk about this year are the ones that let water through. They're called aquaporins because they let the aqua or the water pour in. And then we have carrier proteins where the solute on the outside actually bonds temporarily to the protein. That causes the protein to change shape and now it kicks it out on the inside. And once the protein is gone, it reverts to this shape where it can bond to another molecule and bring it to the inside, carrier proteins. And in my mind, carrier proteins kind of act like this. Let me click on this link. It seems louder over here. Hand me that candle, will you? to me very carefully. Don't put the candle back. With all of your might, shove against the other side of the bookcase. Is that perfectly clear? I think so. So that's my idea of transport proteins. If, on the other hand, a molecule needs to be transported against its concentration gradient, in other words, it's more concentrated inside the cell than it is outside the cell, then, of course, what's going to be needed is the transport protein and energy. And here's an example of that. This is the so-called sodium-potassium pump. And you can see the protein accepts sodium on this side, but in order to change shape and kick the sodium out, ATP has to be used and the energy supplied. And then the potassium can now bind on the outside. And once it's bonded to the protein, the protein changes shape once again, kicks the potassium out, and the, now it's ready to receive more sodium. This is an energy requiring process because the concentration of each one is higher on the side that it's being transported to. And I didn't point this out, but here this energy is used right here. This 
original phosphate energy. Some of it's used to change the shape, but then a little more of it's used here. Finally, really big objects need an entirely different process if they're going to get across the membrane. Endocytosis is the process in which the cell membrane actually reaches out and engulfs a large substance, usually a piece of food, and brings it inside the cell. And the opposite process, the expulsion of objects from the cell, is called exocytosis. And we've already seen exocytosis with vesicles gushing into a cell membrane and delivering their contents outside. Both endocytosis and exocytosis require energy, as you would expect. Moving vesicles and membrane around requires energy. Here's a picture. You can see here's some food outside a cell. It gets engulfed, put into a vesicle, and now it's inside. And here's the same, the opposite process. A vesicle approaches the cell membrane. It gushes into the cell membrane and discards its contents outside. And by seeing this first one, you already know that in order to digest this food, it's going to have to merge with a lysosome. And indeed, that's what we see here, where a food particle is taken in by endocytosis. You get fusion with a lysosome and digestion. The building block molecules diffuse into the cell because they're high concentration here and lower concentration here. And then the waste products get removed here by exocytosis. Finally, I have a quiz for you. Here is a diagram, and what I want you to do is identify as many of the components in this picture as you can. Let me point out what I think you should be able to identify. These purple objects, the yellow objects here, the orange objects in the cell membrane, and then these orange objects here, I think you should be able to do. So stop the video and see if you can do that. Okay, you're back. Another thing you need to do is be able to identify transport based on these diagrams. So you have four answers to get. So you should stop the video and see if you can determine what type of transport is going on in each of these cases. Finally, we have one last quiz for you. Name each process and describe what is happening in each case. So that's it for today. I hope that you understand that objects that cannot get through the membrane because the membrane is impermeable to them have to be transported across membrane. If they are relatively small molecules, proteins can assist that. If the molecules are coming down their concentration gradient, we have a facilitated diffusion process. If they are going up their concentration gradient from low concentration outside to high concentration inside, then energy in the form of ATP will be required. And finally, for really big things, the entire cell membrane has to engulf them to bring them in in the process of endocytosis or expel them in the process of exocytosis. Until next time, go outside, look at nature, ask biological questions, and I'll see you soon.